Are we getting off here, right? Yeah. Oh, they were so desensitized. You know, for a lot of people and some of the ones that we've been talked to, the response is, hey, that's Bart. There's definitely a sense of this is just how it is now and I have to accept it because I need Bart to get to work every day. I would just walk up and down the cars and just go through from car to car, kind of like this. What did you find out that maybe you didn't think you would find out? I think it, no one, as far as we know, has really taken as deep a dive as we did when it comes to what life is like on BART. Hey everyone, I'm Abby Fernandez and I'm here with our investigative team, Bigat Shaban and Kevin Nayas. They're the creators of Bart Derailed. We're going to go behind the story to see how you all made this series happen, what you all learned, and what's next for both Bart and NBC Bay Area. Let's do it. How many months did you ride Bart for? We started riding and recording in July and ultimately continued doing so for about three months. We really have to document what's happening because no one else will. We wanted to spend a considerable amount of time on the trains to get a sort of a real indication of what life was like. Did you go to every single station? It wasn't every station, but it was a lot of them. Kevin and I actually just started signing people up for shifts. I'd go out, Kevin would go out, other members of our investigative unit, all hours of the day, all hours of the night, to basically see what we could see. Never felt unsafe at all. Witnessed a bunch of weird things, but didn't feel unsafe. Sometimes we went together, but a lot of times we wanted to divide and conquer. You know, we could hit more stations if we spread out across the system. So uh, when I go out, I generally kind of uh, just carry a GoPro and I'll put it in my bag or somewhere. I would attach it to uh, my bag. And then I would just walk up and down the cars and just go through from car to car. So just kind of go through, scope things out, look at the situation, just look at my surroundings and, uh, you know, just make my rounds all the way, you know, from end to end, back and forth. You know, I didn't know what I was going to see when, so I just had a bunch of batteries hitting cameras and was just rolling the entire time. Did your goal change every day, you know, in terms of what you were filming? We kind of started out by looking, by just riding the system, going on the different lines. But then after that, we started using some of the data that we have for all of the violent crimes and then try to try to target the stations that had the most crimes at the most frequent times. So right now we're waiting for a board train. Yeah. As you can tell right behind me are the Gatchaban and one of the members of the board of directors of Bart, Deborah Allen. So she actually watched Bart derail. I was actually pleased that somebody put all of this together for people to see. We joined the director on Bart to talk about what we found. For the everyday writer, the value is they are seeing that somebody is exposing what they live with every day. Well, honestly, I like what you guys are doing. Um, you're actually critiquing on what we do here on Bart, what's going on on Bart, the violence on Bart that needs to stop. Nia Wilson was a great friend of mine. I knew her whole family, sisters, brothers. It was just sad to lose somebody that was so young to something that didn't have nothing to do with her. We're learning new information about the man accused of killing a good Samaritan on Bart. It was just two days after we released our original investigation and someone was actually stabbed and killed on BART. And you guys were actually riding BART that day. We were, we were shooting for Synced In, you know, the episode, and we were at the Warm Springs station shooting there. We got notice of this happening. And when we got to the South Hayward station, I think that's when it hit me, where I was like, someone was just stabbed, they were killed here. It was my first time on BART. This was a guy who was actually trying to stop a theft from happening, and he did but then he lost his life because of it. What are people to do? That's kind of the question that we were looking at. But one thing that is clear is though that something does have to change because people can't continue to lose their lives on their commute. How did you feel while you were investigating, while you were doing this and while you were writing BART? I mean, listen, a lot of what we do is not glamorous. It's behind a computer screen looking at tons of data and spreadsheets. And a lot of it was riding on the train when absolutely nothing out of the ordinary happens. That's sort of the nature of looking into something. You know, I think we sort of went into it just like we go into any kind of project that we've been working on. We just kind of want to dig our teeth into it. We spent months 
riding and recording on BART, talking to passengers, those in charge, looking at the crime reports, because you really sort of wanted to become experts in this area before we started to report on it. The reality that commuters are dealing with is that violent crime has more than doubled over the past few years, and so we thought it was a legitimate question to ask why and what's being done about it. And not only do we have the video to back it up, but there's also data that we've crunched. And then when you compare the amount of violent crime on BART with other major transportation systems across the country, we have a higher violent crime rate here in the Bay Area, and that's compared to cities like New York, Atlanta, DC, LA. And what we looked at was how often there's violent crime per million rides. And so when you do that math, you find that the rate is actually higher here in the Bay Area. And so that's the very stat that BART itself likes to brag about. They say, listen, we only have four violent crimes for every million rides. And the reality is, I learned from your series, is that the rides are like upwards of 400,000 per day, right? Yeah, more than 420,000 rides on BART every day. So you're talking about four crimes in two days, potentially? Ultimately, by their own statistics. Wow, these are a lot of comments. Were you guys surprised with the immense amount of feedback we've received? I was taken aback. I, I can't recall ever seeing a story that has hundreds of comments for every portion of it. I'm glad the story is being told. I seen a dude smoking crack and a dude was watching porn next to me. This is really a uh, dialogue with our viewers. So we wanted to know what are they seeing? What's going on on the system? It's been this really great opportunity to be able to sort of communicate with viewers in real time. And I mean, there's some that says maybe they're lucky but they've been living here for a year and they haven't seen anything crazy yet. Some riders have had a great experience on BART. Someone says I basically quit riding BART. I only use it a few times a year if I have to. So people, yeah, people are not riding anymore. Yeah, so when you talk about losing billions in revenue, it's really tough to quantify how many people are, are out there like that who are saying, like, I'm out. So we're at the Coliseum station. This is the worst one on the list, on the list that you guys compiled. How did you determine that list, first of all? So basically, Kevin looked at the actual amount of violent crimes committed at all 48 stations across the BART system. And we found actually where we're standing right now, the Coliseum stop actually has the highest rate of violent crime all across board. Actually, the top five are all on the East Bay. So tell me about, you know, what were the factors that you considered? I know that the violent crimes include anywhere from phone thefts, to like actual violent crimes where you know someone was hurt. Well, violent crime consists of four categories, robbery, aggravated assault, murder, and rape. You know, I was kind of surprised by the number of people that I saw doing drugs in the back of the car. Um, we're talking about like, somebody just back there with a lighter with powdery substance and aluminum foil. And it's like, this is going into the air and like we're all in this car. Am I breathing this now? You watched this crime before you because you got, you got that chance, right? As opposed to a lot of people that just ride it and they're minding own business. Do people do anything about it? Oh, it was so normal. Uh, that's kind of one of the things that we saw that a lot of BART riders, they're desensitized. You know, when we ask everyone, hey, what are some of the things that you've seen? And people say they've seen, you know, women get punched, they've seen violence on the trains, and it's to the point where they're so desensitized that the next time they see it, it goes, oh yeah, well, just Monday. One of the other problems that we saw is that, you know, what is the, uh, the punishment or what are the consequences for violent crime? And so that's where we met, you know, Anthony Delgado, who he was viciously attacked and he had no idea what happened to his case afterwards. We ended up going through court documents and found that the guy eventually was banned from BART two years after and he still hasn't been convicted of anything. So that's another thing, I mean, I know that you guys talked about that in the series where people get banned, you know, from BART, but how do they keep track of these people that are banned? How do they know they're not riding BART? It's virtually impossible, even though they track how often they give them out and to whom. Someone commented, stop the fare evaders going on BART. That will fix most of its problems. I know that's one of the things that you guys were, you know, investigating. What will fix this problem? I mean, BART actually hasn't done any studies to see if there's a direct correlation between a high rate of crime and a high rate of people skipping out on paying, but that's definitely a theory that police officers have shared with members of the BART Board of Directors and a fair share of the BART Board of Directors feel that as well. And they call it hardening the station. That's something that they say within the next year they're really going to take a serious look at doing. There was a recent five-part investigative report that NBC did. It highlighted uh, a lot of the the bad behavior that we, we work with in BART and that we're trying to deter. After that meeting, 
Allen says Bart's general manager, Bob Powers, told her he's now confident he will be able to find the $150 million needed to install those new fare gates throughout BART within the next three years. And we need to get to a place where we've got an officer at every station. I mean, at the heart of the issue, you have a lot of passengers who feel more police officers on trains, on the platforms, would make them safer. But you also have a group of passengers who feel like more police would actually make them feel less safe. It's not a, certainly a simple issue to solve, especially when you have people wanting literally complete opposite solutions. And so we wanted to do something that sort of put, you know, the magnifying glass to BART and not just raise the issues that a lot of people already know about, but sort of dig deeper into why they're happening, who's responsible to fix it, and why hasn't that fix happened just yet. What are we looking at here? How are you gonna you know, continue this investigation? A lot of people have given us their feedback on what they think will solve the problem. So I think what we wanna do is see, um, are these solutions feasible and will they work? What about BART? What's next for BART? I mean, a lot of it has to do with funding and where is the money going to come from. So I mean there is a plan right now to add roughly a hundred more officers over the next couple of years, but that will require a significant chunk of the budget. Similarly, the board of directors for BART just approved these new, they call them swing style gates, but the reality is, is that's several million dollars as well. The hope is, according to the general manager, they hope to figure that out over the next three years. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much for all your input. I mean, I love going behind the story here because we see everything. We watch these videos, but we don't exactly know what goes on behind the scenes. And I'm excited for what's to come in the next chapters. So thank you all so much. Thanks, Abby. Yeah. Thanks for watching, guys. And make sure to subscribe. We want to keep watching more of these videos and leave a like. We'll see you later. I'm